Hi, I'm Selva Prabhakaran. So in this one, we will talk about the MRMR feature selection technique. MRMR stands for Maximum Relevancy, Minimum Redundancy. Now you might be thinking, in today's world, is feature selection even needed? Especially like you feed in all these features to a machine learning algorithm and let it come up with the best possible algorithm or prediction, right? After watching this full video, you will have the understanding of why even we need feature selection, especially in practical business settings when you're working on a project. All right, let's get into it. When it comes to feature selection, there are two main types. One is an all relevant approach. There are two main types of feature selection algorithms. One is an all relevant VANT approach and second type is the minimal optimal. Minimal optimal as the name suggests you might have guessed already. An all relevant approach for example a uh, popular technique for this will be Boruta. We will talk about this in detail in the next video. Okay. And minimal optimal would be the MRMR. What is the difference? An all relevant technique will try to select all the features even if there is slight evidence that that particular feature is useful in predicting the Y. Okay, if X is useful in predicting the Y, it will get selected for sure. That's what Boruta does. Whereas, so for example, so in this entire picture, right, uh, feature, these features on the outside, the yellow ones, are useless features. They are not having any role in predicting the Y. Alright, so these will be rejected by both these types of algorithms. Whereas, an algorithm like Boruta will select all the ones that have even the slightest usefulness in predicting the Y. Whereas, a minimal optimal will try to remove redundancy. What I mean by this is, let's say you have two features A and B. Okay, so both A and B are useful in predicting the Y. But if A and B themselves are explaining each other, what I mean by that is, if A and B, both of them are correlated to each other, there can be other versions of correlated, what the right word would be the explainability. If A, the sum of the information contained in A is also present in B, or at least most of the information is also present in B, then they are sort of redundant, they carry the same information. Right? In such case, an all relevant algorithm will select both A and B, whereas a minimal optimal will select either A or B, whichever is the better case. So in order to understand this explicitly, let's see this with an example. Okay, so we are trying to predict sales and the sales is dependent on various other features. The price, brand score, industry sales, ad spend, competitor A sales, competitor B sales, TV spend and digital ad spend. So these are the different features. Now if you look at it closely, right, what you might by default tend to do is we will try to fit in all these variables to a ML model and try to predict the sales, right? This is what we typically try to do. However, when you are trying to build this in real world projects, your clients or your stakeholders might ask you questions like, okay, if I'm going to increase the ad spend by so much, will my sales increase by what amount? These kind of questions will be there. So it is very important that you select the features that are absolutely and correctly relevant to explain the sales. For example, see here, we have the variable industry sales here. But the industry sales here is actually a function of competitor A sales and B sales. If you add up these two sales, it might give you industry sales. There might be few more competitors also, but probably competitor A and B are what matters for this particular company. Likewise, you look at ad spend. This ad spend is in turn a function of the TV ad spend, digital ad spend, many other ad spend might also be there. These, instead of having, a, having your model specification like this, you might want to think about how you want to specify your model and have the most relevant and optimal features to explain the sales. In real world situation, you will have many more variables besides this. Say you have hundreds and thousands of variables and you want to pick only the few variables that are sufficient to explain whatever your target variable is, then we go for that model. However, these causal relationships might not be known beforehand. For example, say these two are impacting the in industry sales. Likewise, these two are in turn impacting the total ad spend. This relationship might not be very explicit when we are dealing with a large number of variables. And this is where MRMR tries to come in and help us solve this problem. And to be clear, for example, this is your feature importances. After building the model, you get feature importances like this. It is not like, okay, we will get the top four features from the feature importances and use those features to build your further model. Not like this. From this table, we know, not just this table, we know that price, brand score, and spend, and industry sales are sort of the core variables around this. Now, if it was an algorithm like Boruta, it will select all of these variables. 
all of these features will get selected and look at this the you have a random variable here random numbers and that is having a feature feature importance of 1.3 right so this means that all of these features have a number greater than greater than the random number so these features do better than the random variable but what we want really is this ideal for what are these variables let's find out so how mrmr does the feature selection is as follows now the first step is you need to dec decide how many features we want to pick this is an input that we will need to give to mrmr once the number of features is selected we start the iterations suppose let's simplify this let's have let's say you have only six variables from the six variables we are going to predict or we are going to select only the most important ones in the first iteration we start with nothing in the second iteration from these six variables we will calculate a score we will calculate a score we will come to this idea of what the score is shortly so we will compute a score based on the score whichever variable is having the highest score we will select that particular variable and once selected once it comes into the bucket this variable does not go out likewise we do this computation one more time iteration one more time we compute this score again and from the from this list d got the highest score and that got selected now let's try to understand how this score is computed now in this iteration we have two variables selected and four more variables are remaining right so how the how is this score computed let's try to understand now from b c e f we need to find out which one is the best the next best one right so we compute a score which we can call as the m r m r score m r m r score which is nothing but the numerator you have the relevance of b on the target okay this relevance is nothing but the f statistic between the feature and the target we will talk more about f statistic shortly just hold on we'll come to this so we want this number to be as high as possible if it is higher the better second thing is in the denominator we have the redundancy of b with respect to the features that is already selected so here we have already selected a and d already right so amongst this we are going to compute the redundancy of b with respect to a and d as per mrmr what it does is it calculates the correlation of b and a then correlation of b and d and take a mean of that so the correlation the mean correlation basically okay so we have the relevance we have the redundance higher the relevance the better it is lower the redundancy the better it is so whichever variable got the highest score that will get selected in the next iteration so this goes on it goes on until k variables are selected now think about it in this version of mrmr there could be multiple versions of mrmr you could you yourself could come up with net net we want relevance on the numerator and redundancy on the denominator alternately in addition to f statistic we will talk about this f statistic but instead of f statistic you could also say build a machine learning model that predicts the target as a function of the feature which is b in this case and see how the performance is that performance could also be a numerator at the end of the day whichever is giving us the best possible result is what we want to pick likewise you could think of some other metric besides correlation also okay there is mutual information and other metrics are present you can come up with your own version and use that also here but in this one let's try to understand for the sake of completeness let's i try to understand the f statistic also traditionally f statistic is associated with linear regression models so whenever you are trying to build a linear regression model we try to predict y as a function of some some x some x or multiple x's also and you will have a beta coefficient that goes along with the x right so you will have an equation that goes something like this it helps to tell tells us if a given linear regression model is significant or not what that practically means is it tells us if the particular machine learning or linear regression model is doing better than the mean prediction mean prediction means you simply take the y the mean of y that is y dash right you take the mean of y and use that as the predicted variable for the all the as a prediction for all the future observations if your model's prediction is doing better than your mean than the mean prediction then that model is useful that is it is a significant model otherwise it is not and practically if you think about it right say you have this equation what this means is if the beta that has been computed from your model right the equation is going to give you a particular beta right if it is significantly different from zero then your model is significant which means if your f statistic is larger both of these cases will happen so that's why we look at the f statistic the formula for the f statistic is given here okay so what this means i'll tell you 
So F statistics is mean squared regression divided by mean squared error. Okay, so what this means is, look at this. We are, for every other observation, say you have a data set, right? You have you have a X variable, you have a Y variable, and you have a Y hat. You build the linear regression model, and you'll be able to compute the error. Once Y hat is predicted, Y hat minus Y, you will get the error values also, right? So you have all these error values. If you look at the numerator for the F statistics numerator, it, uh, it tries to estimate how different is your prediction against the mean prediction. So this is your model's prediction. This is the mean prediction. We are computing the error from the mean prediction. We are also computing the error from the model's prediction. Square it up, okay, square it up and add it up for all the observations in your data. That's why we are doing a sigma here. This is so i equal to one to number of rows, okay? You have y hat i, so this will be the same. This is y. Don't, you don't need an I here. Likewise, here also an I will be there. Okay. So this is what the numerator is. How is your model's model's prediction different from your mean's prediction? Right? The higher the value, better it is. Okay. And we are dividing the whole thing by P, which is the number of predictors. Okay. This is the number of predictors. Likewise, in the denominator, we have the mean squared error. So how is the model's prediction different from the actual values? This is nothing but the error, the squared errors. Right, we square up the errors and divide by the total number of observations minus p, which is the number of predictors, minus 1. This whole thing is the degrees of freedom, total degrees of freedom. So this is what this formula is about. Net, net, higher the F statistic, better, better is your model or better is your particular variable that we are, we are dealing with. So in this case, we are talking about the B variable, right? Or X variable here. So higher the F, better is your X. Higher the F, the higher will be the relevance score, right? F statistic higher, relevance score will be higher, which means this score will also be higher, which means there's a higher chance that this particular variable B will get selected for the current iteration. Hope this makes it clear. Let's also quickly look at the implementation also. So to, to implement it in Python is quite simple. We have a package called MRMR selection. Pip install this package. Then once this is installed, we are going to do a simple example, very, very simple example. We are going to create a data set using the make classification method inside scikit-learn data sets. So this will create X and Y. There are 1000 samples, 50 features. Out of the 50 features, 10 features are informative, 40 features are redundant features. So in such a way, we have created this. You can be, you can change these numbers and create a data set the way you want, okay? Or use a real world data set also. Now, once these are created, just pass in the feature set Y and the total number of features that you want to select, 10 in this case, to MRMR. We might not know 10 beforehand. See, we are cheating here in a sense. We know the number of informative features to be 10, but we won't know this number beforehand. So you need to sort of iterate this practically. You might start with 5, see how the model's performance is, start do, then do 6, then do 7 and see whichever value of k is giving you the best performance. Then use those selected features, right? Whichever selected feature set you are having, use those selected features to build your machine learning model and see how the performance is, right? If it is making sense or not, then you can go ahead and freeze that particular feature set. So this is typically how MRMR works out there in real practice.